In a video shared on Facebook, Waziri presented a visual demonstration of workers meticulously arranging rough and substantial granite blocks at the foundation of the pyramid, located adjacent to the Sphinx. Amid the laborious activity of workers alongside the contrasting grey and golden blocks, Waziri engages in gesturing, providing detailed explanations to the audience regarding the intricate process taking place. Numerous individuals have raised the inquiry of when we will cease the irrationality in the administration of Egyptian heritage. It is a matter of significant concern and has prompted widespread discussion within our community. The pyramid, upon its initial construction, was adorned with a layer of granite which, however, has gradually diminished over time. The ongoing renovation seeks to meticulously revive the pyramid's authentic appearance through the meticulous reconstruction of its granite casing, thus ensuring the faithful restoration of its original grandeur. Over the course of three years, the ambitious endeavor, referred to by Waziri as Egypt's gift to the world in the 21st century, will be undertaken under the guidance of Waziri, who leads the Egyptian-Japanese mission responsible for the project. The matter of conserving heritage in Egypt, a country heavily reliant on tourism for 10% of its GDP, sparks intense discussions. This is an in-depth analysis of the complexities surrounding the preservation of Egypt's rich heritage, considering its significant economic ties to tourism. The recent devastation of significant parts of Cairo's historic district has stirred widespread mobilization within civil society. Despite being largely prohibited from engaging in political activities, civil society has shifted its focus towards challenging the government, predominantly in the realms of urban planning and heritage preservation. This shift represents a profound reaction to the destructive events, prompting an in-depth exploration of urban development and heritage concerns as primary battlegrounds. The ongoing discussion has recently honed in on the ancient 15th century Abu al-Abbas al-Mursi Mosque located in the coastal city of Alexandria, which happens to be Egypt's second largest. Local officials have revealed an in-depth inquiry following a decision by a renovation contractor to repaint the intricately designed and multicolored ceilings of the largest mosque in the city with a coat of white paint. Numerous individuals have expressed concerns about the potential repercussions of disturbing ancient Egyptian artifacts, stressing their significant role in offering valuable knowledge about one of the most impactful and long-lasting civilizations in the world. It has been emphasized that these artifacts should be handled with utmost care and respect to preserve their historical and cultural significance. The ancient relics provide a compelling narrative of a civilization that thrived over millennia, encompassing the pre-dynastic era through to the Ptolemaic and Roman periods. This extensive timeline mirrors the enduring legacy of the culture, offering a profound insight into its evolution and societal developments. There is a consensus that the ancient artifacts in Egypt play a crucial role in defining its cultural heritage. However, the construction projects that encroach upon these historical monuments are viewed as detrimental in the grand scheme of things. Such actions are believed to have lasting implications that could potentially compromise Egypt's historical legacy. The exceptional skill and creativity demonstrated in the artifacts of ancient Egypt are truly extraordinary and deserving of admiration. The artifacts on display demonstrate the high level of expertise in sculpting, jewelry crafting, pottery, and architectural design standing as a testament to the creative abilities of the society. Archaeologists searching for Cleopatra find a geometric miracle tunnel. Far beneath a temple in the ancient ruins of Tapasiris Magna, a city on the Egyptian coast, archaeologists made an incredible discovery. They uncovered a tunnel which is being referred to as the geometric miracle. Kathleen Martinez, from the University of Santo Domingo, uncovered the structure when searching for the lost tomb of Cleopatra. The tunnel was 13 meters below the ground, 2 meters tall, and roughly 1,300 meters long. It was built into sandstone and boasts some exceptional engineering brilliance to pull it off. It has been compared to the Eupolinos tunnel on the Greek island of Samos, which is equally large and impressively designed. Martinez says this is a huge discovery for the team and could also take them one step closer to finding the lost tomb of Cleopatra. However, they still need to figure out the reason for these tunnels and what might be inside the temple. 
Their hope is that after further exploring, they may be able to find the room that holds the tombs of Cleopatra and her husband Mark Antony. This would be the largest discovery of the 21st century, and archaeologists are extremely excited to continue exploring the temple. Nonetheless, the tunnel is an incredible discovery and has already presented researchers with some hidden treasures. They uncovered several pieces of pottery and a unique block of limestone within the tunnel. Even if the tunnel does not lead to the lost tombs, it will significantly help archaeologists to understand the history of the temple better. Now we just have to wait and see what else they can uncover in the near future. Bible Stolen from U.S. Found in Netherlands The Pittsburgh Library lost a Geneva Bible from its rare collection of books nearly 20 years ago, and it has just been discovered in a strange place. The book was said to have been published in 1615, and its home was once the Carnegie Library in Pittsburgh. A former archivist that worked at the library and a rare book dealer was accused of stealing nearly 300 rare books with an estimated value of $8 million. However, recently the book was discovered in the Netherlands. It was found at the American Pilgrim Museum in Leiden. The museum had paid $1,200 for the book, but has now returned it to its original home in Pittsburgh. The FBI hopes this recent case will inspire other collectors and museums to check their inventory and determine if anything might be stolen. As of now, only 18 of the 300 books have been recovered. One of these books is the Philosophe Naturalis Principia Mathematica by John Adams, which has a value of $900,000 US dollars. That being said, another book by philosopher Adam Smith called An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations has yet to be recovered and is estimated to be worth $180,000 US dollars. The library has closed the display that used to hold these books and will only be reopening it once the others have been recovered. As a result, the recently found Bible has not yet been put back on display, as the museum is still deciding whether they will continue to share it with the public. Fortunately, some of the stolen books have been returned, but it may be many years before all 300 are returned to the library's collection. We can only hope that they are discovered and brought back so everyone can enjoy looking back at the history they represent. Secret Underground Theatre Found in the Catacombs The Paris Catacombs are quite an intriguing place indeed. So much so, the catacombs have been featured in many famous horror stories, such as the movie As Above, So Below. In this network of underground tunnels, lined with skulls and bones, you would not expect to find much of anything resembling the modern world. However, Paris police discovered one such thing only a handful of years ago. In September 2004, police were undergoing a training exercise in uncharted parts of the catacombs when they found a sign that said, building site, no access. Naturally, if there were such a thing, they would know about it. They pushed on and found a camera recording them. Continuing further into the area, a recording of dogs barking played, presumably to warn them to not go any further. But they did. They stumbled upon a 400 square meter chasm containing a cinema, dining room and other amenities. It was equipped with a projector, chairs and a fully stocked bar. There was also a stockpile of many films, ranging from 1950s movies to modern thrillers. If that wasn't enough, there was professionally installed electricity and even three telephone lines connected to the area. As it turns out, the area was created by Les UX, the Urban Experiment, a mysterious group that improves hidden corners of Paris that have fallen into disrepair. It consists mainly of urban explorers, artists, architects and historians, and they held film festivals in this little cavern in the catacombs. Wouldn't you like to secretly watch a spooky film beneath the streets of Paris and sip a cask of wine? Amontillado, perhaps? The Lost Wealth of a Fear King Solomon is one of the most famous characters of the Old Testament and was the third king of Israel. He was also one of the wealthiest people to ever exist during that period. He was well known as a savvy and knowledgeable leader that ruled the Middle East for nearly four decades. 
King Solomon collected an immense amount of gold during his reign and was known for having 500 tons of it. He used his gold to create armor, clothing, plates, and a throne from the rare metal. In today's value, it's estimated that King Solomon would have a net worth of $60 trillion based on the immense amount of gold he owned. The gold was held in the Cave of Ophir, but as of now, no one knows where that is. Unfortunately, the Bible often discusses the king's wealth, but never provides concrete details on where this cave can be found. Some experts claim that he collected this gold with the help of Phoenician king Hiram, who ruled Tyre, modern-day Lebanon. Therefore, the cave could be located in one of these regions. But these regions and their people were known to travel often, and the hidden cave of Ophir could be somewhere in Africa, Asia, or America. Some archaeologists have claimed to have already found the lost mine of Ophir and argue that the metal which made Solomon his money was copper and not gold. But there is yet to be any conclusive evidence to back up these claims. The existence and locations of this cave are still heavily discussed today. Archaeologists are still searching for the hidden cave and all its wealth. But what are your thoughts on these discoveries? Be sure to let us know in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.